Moving on, we have another interesting clip here uh, taken from a brand new show that's yet to be, I don't know, it's actually launched already. Episode one, I think it's out already uh, from the Joe Biden network, a uh, new network that Joe Biden has effectively launched, I guess, in response to some people kind of assuming that he isn't a big of a mogul as he probably thinks he's in his head and maybe justifying some of the rumors of his 250 million uh, valuation of his podcast uh, with his supposed um, negotiations with Spotify. But one of the first shows that he's kind of debuted um is an episode is a podcast called see the thing is hosted by three young ladies one called olivia one called bridget and another girl called what four court pumps or something like that so is that her name four court pumps yeah or peg the study i don't know whatever the name is so let's um look at the clip of it now where they're talking about tory lanes and they're discussing the release of his album and again i have some thoughts regarding this because i think it's a little it's getting a little bit annoying right this sort of view regarding the Tory Lanez album and regarding his issue with Megan Thee Stallion and I'm gonna release some of my comments as we continue watching the video. So I mean that. she said it even before all of this kind of like trailed and snowballed she went on live and said that she never said anything to the police because she was trying to protect a black man Correct. from being slain Correct. or brutalized by the police. Right and what you just because someone says something doesn't mean it's true, especially when there's two parties involved. We do make an album, throw Kehlani name in there, JoJo name in there, J.R. Right. Smith randomly, but and shout out and shout like, out, shout out, out Kehlani. Okay, that's a weird statement to make. Again, let's just assume, right? This is a thing. I don't know. Where, I don't know whether it's a it's a cognitive disconnect or if it's a thing that just um. Yeah, is it a cognitive disconnect? Or is it a, uh, or is it some kind of weird, um, yeah, what, what could it be? I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it's odd. It's odd that two people could go through something, a situation quite clearly, right? A very serious situation where allegedly a gun was fired, where allegedly someone was injured by either the result of the gun being fired or being directly shot with the gun in the foot, in the case of Megan and Stallion. And two people have different accounts of the story to have two people have different accounts of what exactly happened and of course you know then the authorities get involved and they didn't have to adjudicate um and get to some kind of you know reasonable conclusion as to what actually occurred uh prior to the said individual getting into the vehicle what happened in the vehicle and what happened henceforth right but there's two sides to the story it's just what it is right unfortunately of course one person might be telling the truth but there are two people in this incident so you have to accept that there's two versions of it now if tori really believes that he didn't shoot Meg the Stallion. He's perfectly within his rights to say whatever he wants about whoever has gone out on the ledge and said that he did do it when they weren't there. Because I, in my opinion, I think people have the right to bury him and say he's cancelled because of what they heard might have happened. And he also has the right to bury those people and diss them on a track uh, if in response to what he thinks, what they're saying is basically false, right? They, they all have a right to say what they want to say. Now, does it mean what if he's saying what he's saying, that he's somehow um, uh, reducing the severity of the incident? No, because if he clearly thinks that he did nothing wrong, why should he go out of his way to sort of um, walk on eggshells, remain silent, remain stoic, apologize for things that he didn't do just so he can appease the public that weren't even there? That's the issue. Right, because it's essentially an issue that occurred with supposedly three to four people. Right, they have to, of course, account for themselves when the court case goes on. I think it's October thirteenth or something along those lines. I remember it from the Los Angeles Times article. If that's the case, then we're gonna find out the truth rightly or wrongly anyway. So I don't understand why people are so hard on either side. Whether it's like Tory's innocent or Tory's guilty, we're gonna find out in a, in a week or two. Kalani and, and Jojo both for taking a stand. Oh, and also the Jojo and Kalani thing, he's allowed to do that, right? If, if you listen to the album, if his, if his side of the story is true and he, necessarily, and he kind of thinks that he has a personal relationship with these people and that he thinks that he's owed a phone call, I think that's, I think that's fair enough. I've even said it myself. I think, um, what's, the, what's the one thing that I'm going to say? I think, was it murder? Was it not even murder? It wasn't even murder. Rape is the one. Rape and touching of kids, right? If one of my friends gets accused or is confound guilty, you know, let's say one of my friends is accused of, of touching kids or, or of rape, you know, in my book, from my personal experience, again, you're out, you're deleted, you're done, right? I'm not even, I'm never talking to you again. It is what it is. But if you're accused of, 
you know, something libelous or something salacious in media. Um, you were caught cheating on somebody. You were involved in a really serious or violent fight. Um, you know, whatever it may be called, you're, you know, you're involved in some sort of altercation that included firearms. I'm going to give you a call. You're my friend. I owe you that. I'm going to call you and find out what happened. I'm not going to get on social media or make a video instantly without calling my friend, especially if you're my friend and we're actually boys, not industry mates, but we're actually friends. You've met my mom. You've come to my house. You know my last name, all those kind of things. Like those are the things that I would give you the benefit of that, and I'd give you a call. And I think if he legitimately thinks those people, Kalani and Jojo, should have given him a call. Again, this is only if you believe Tory Lane's side of the story. If what he's saying is true, then yeah, you should be, you should feel aggrieved. You should want to say something like, "Hey, that that was kind of whack, right? You're my friend. You should have, you should have given me the benefit of the doubt, or you should at least called me and heard my side of it. And then if you decide to do the other thing, then cool. But you know." Everyone wants to be performative. Everyone wants to, um, you know, show that they're doing something good, show that they're being virtuous, but really they're just performing for the spectators and they don't really, you know, they, this is probably, for Tori, I'd imagine, or somebody going through that experience, I'd imagine this is a better indication of who your friends actually are than what happened prior, especially during the quarantine radio days, because I'm sure there's a lot of people that were slubbing on his knob when he was on quarantine radio and doing all those great things on social media, getting out of his deal and blowing up and doing great things. And now so suddenly he's been accused of something, right? Accused of something that looks very, very, very dubious if you look at some of the details and suddenly everyone's meant to kind of fall in line and cancel him. It's like, why? Why can't people use a bit of critical thinking and think, you know what, mm, that, that story doesn't really match up. Or I'm going to wait for the authorities to get involved and then I'll decide what I think of the story. And yeah, I agree. And because I, I really do think that that what we what we are not seeing enough of is more female artists getting together and really supporting one another. That's what's... That's never going to happen though, isn't it? Women hate women. I think there's a lot of studies out there that say that, man. Like, you look at... What was that study about most women hate working for female bosses? It just is what it is, isn't it? That, that's never going to happen, especially in an industry where they purposely pit women against each other right record industries purposely place or purposely put women in competition with one of another causing unnecessary friction and cause unnecessary divide support looks mm -hmm. like yeah that i agree. really is what support looks like so shout out to y'all for doing that because i think that was really powerful and it, and it was important and i and to me again we haven't seen a lot of i have not seen a lot of men come out there have been there have been a few there have been a few why would they come out if they don't know what really happened why would anybody come out Part of the reason why some of these um, blog posts, I mean, sorry, some of these blogs on social media are really destructive to whatever community or whatever subculture you're interested in is because they comment on gossip. They comment on rumors, right? They don't comment on things that actually occurred. They don't go out of their way to um, find out what actually happened. They don't do any sort of journalistic investigation. They just report on stuff they've heard in comments, stuff they might have heard, overheard in a podcast, things they've seen on the video, interpreting weird Instagram stories. It's never truth-seeking. It's never truth-seeking. So why would you go out of your way to comment on something that you've seen third or second hand, right? on another platform and then kind of put your flag in the mouth and say, oh, I know what happened. This happened there. It's like, what was wrong with you? COVID is out in the air, man. There's many things that we should be worrying about as opposed to what occurred in that vehicle. And again, if you want to investigate it for what we've seen so far, the DLs don't really stack up in Megan Thee Stallion's favor from what I've seen so far. But again, I'm remaining neutral because there's a court case pending. And then guess what? Once all the evidence comes out, I'll be able to make my own mind up anyway. Yeah. Bumby came out and Bumby came out and spoke against Tori. He did. He did. Um, but very few, very few male artists have come out and say, you know, that he's a that he's a clown for how he handled himself. Or again, you're allowed to call him a clown. You're allowed to call out people who haven't stood up for her. But you know, there's no obligation to do either. Either. Or even with the outlet for, and maybe here's the thing: none of us were there, right? So we don't even know. So I can't even. I'm not even. None of us really know unless we were there. Cool. Innocent until proven guilty. I guess. I guess. How does that work? So when somebody, so let, let's just, let's, let's make this make sense. When a black person is falsely accused, it's innocent until proven guilty. When somebody within your own community does something to a black woman, because allegedly black women are the most unprotected uh, people in the world. I don't know where that phrase comes from. I don't know what evidence supports that, but let's just agree that that's true. It's one of those mantras that you just say that sort of like, you know, it's like a little jingle that makes sense, right? Cool, let's say that's true. If that's the case, why wouldn't you give the same grace that you would give some kid being accused of, you know, I, I don't know, those random stories here in America of some guy planted evidence on a flipping suspect in a, in a drive-by or whatever it may be. I don't know. Pulled over a kid and he planted evidence on him, right? 
why do you give that kid that got planned evidence a bly, even though he's got a, an extremely long rap sheet, right? You still think, you know what? I don't trust that cop because he's got a history of planning evidence, but you don't want to give Tory Lanez the benefit of the doubt. Because so far, for again, this is the thing you have to remember. If this was anybody else, then if this is someone that had a history of like, you know, violence towards women or just in ge violence in general, then I'd be understandable that why you'd say, hey, it is possible that he could do that. Again, we don't know the guy. No one's, no, I don't, I'm not fucking familiar with the dude. Could give two shits. I enjoy the music and I keep it moving. But let's say you are somebody with a history of violence. Then I, then I understand why you'd be um, more willing to accept that he did actually do the things that he's been, alleged of, he's been accused of doing. But so far, we've not seen any evidence or prior to this case, we've seen no evidence of Tory Lanez being violent or especially to women, right? We've seen him having some dust-ups with, uh, what? what's his name? Uh, Travis Scott and stuff, right? We've seen him having some dust-ups with Drake where they kind of settled it and they're sort of on good accord. But in terms of women stuff, we've not actually seen him get involved in any kind of... Um, the only beef I saw him get involved in was one of one of the dolls, right? I think he, um, one of the dolls made a diss track about him or something. I don't know what that stemmed from. But there hasn't been any case of him being violent, him being a douche, him being a dickhead to women in general. He's pro he's pretty much carried himself pretty well for the most part. For, for the most part. There are some things that he's done that I've probably not been a fan of. But for the most when it comes to women, I've not really seen anything. So to, to immediately think that he could be guilty just because a woman, somebody that happens to have the same genitalia as you said, is just insane. It's really, really insane. I wonder what would happen if a white woman, if, if this was Kylie that accused Tori of this, what would they say? That's the interesting part of it, right? A, a girl that kind of some people probably don't like some people think that she's probably trying to pretend to be black or whatever, taking a good black man away, right? Imagine what they'd say then. What do you think they'd say? So if that's the approach, I guess. If that's the approach you want to take, fine. But the handling of the allegations, I'm, I am an it's advocate. Wild. I'm an advocate for the how. Hmm, she's not making sense here. Okay, how am I meant to handle something if I, if I'm, no, I'm not guilty? Tell me. How you handle something, how you say something, how you move on the on, like in response to something to it me speaks volumes it shows yeah. me who you are for real that but well, that doesn't make any sense though in it he didn't say nothing zero when the case happened zero when people were bashing his name in public when megan stallion was getting on instagram and crying and basically naming him out naming him right on instagram live and saying you shot me tell them why you shot me you're getting people to go and you know tarnish my name in the media blah 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 blah, blah. he said nothing Right, I thought that would I even I myself, right, looking at it from the outside, I thought that was the one that was gonna trigger him. Nothing triggered him. He said nothing. He remained quiet, he kept his counsel and just let the courts, you know, let the court system go about doing its thing, let the police investigation um roll on. And now we've got a court date of of course, I think, you know, like I said, um next week or something like that happening very, very soon. But he said not a word. People were slandering his name, removing him, tracks from the playlist, putting up salacious tweets, saying wild thing on podcasts, Miles said some mad shit on the Joe Biden podcast podcast and then walked it back because he spoke to his young boys right <laughs> it's like what what's he meant to do if he's not guilty like legitimately what's he meant to do just not say anything how you handle how you handle allegations like that the fact that there was not an immediate uh, not an immediate address she, she about to say apology but how can you apologize for something you didn't do immediate address what i meant to address i didn't shoot her but i'm gonna let the police investigation carry on and then he brings out the album is that gonna be okay come on to the people to apologize for even a misunderstanding. None of that. You dropped an album. Good right. night. Good night, I mean, sir. That's I, all we have I to said say. it on Twitter and I'll say it again. We allow And again, this is the best thing to do, right? I'd imagine. I'm assuming because it's an album and it's music, you can argue that it's just entertainment purposes and none of the lyrics should be taken as fact. And if you are gonna be brought up to the stand, if you are gonna if you are gonna be grilled in court, it probably is best for you not to comment on things on an open case in public, right? That probably is the best thing to do. Don't comment in an open case. But again, people's first for gossip, people's first for information. They want people that are going through court cases to get on Instagram live and talk about their court case and essentially put themselves in more danger, put themselves in more trouble, especially if they've done nothing wrong, right? Because if you've done nothing wrong, best know the you know the, the person you're going to court against, their lawyers or their, their people advising them are going to make sure that they dig up any pieces of evidence that they can to slander your name. And unfortunately for Meg Thee Stallion, she was too quick. She kind of felt the pressure online. I don't know why she did it. She, she spoke out of turn too many times, let her friends say too many wild things online. That's probably, and eventually, even if it did happen, it's probably going to really, um, really going to, um, it's really going to fuck her over when it goes, when it goes to court. hundred percent. I definitely think so. There's too much information out there. Most of it is coming from Meg's team. Allowed him mm -hmm. in 2020 
to use Instagram as a platform to yeah. degrade women. Mm. We cannot be surprised that this is the response. Oh, uh, you are talking out your ass. Well, because women were women were um, gladly right signing up to twerk on his platform. Right? Is is was Tory Lanez quality ready? The only place you've ever seen twerking on social media. And now you're trying to equate the fact that he has people twerking on his social media as the reason why he could potentially have shot a woman. That's insane. That's like saying because Joe Biden has a video vixen in his background of his video shaking her bum that he could abuse a woman. Hmm. But yeah, that's probably not a good example because he might have done it in the past. But that's not a good example. What are you talking about? In I this agree. situation, we can't. I agree. but I And essentially... Hip hop, like shake, like twerking of the bum, is probably another pillar of hip hop. You know, what's it? The four pillars of hip, four pillars of hip hop are like what graffiti, uh, break dancing, DJing, and MCing. A fifth pillar might be big butts. Do you want to take down the fifth pillar of hip hop? The fifth pillar? You sure about that? We'll say in response to that situation, we're gonna move on because I don't want to give him no more of our pod time. Hey, there we go. <laughs> and that's, and that's that. Virtue signaling at his best. De de tarnish and drag a man's name through the mud due to an allegation and then get on your high horse and say, we're not going to talk about him anymore on our platform. Virtue signaling 101. Oh God, some of these people, man. Some of these people.